two league games in four days, then you've had a three week break. Um, you've had as many postponed games as league games. And, and I really want to ask what is probably the most obvious question. How difficult has that been or has it actually helped you? Great question, that. It's both, really, because I want to get to know the players more, which I've been able to do because I had more touch time in terms of training. So I'm getting to know them as characters, I'm getting to know how they perform, how they think, how they feel. Because the practices we have here now are very much that, learning about each other. So they're learning about me, they know what I like and what I don't like, categorically. I'm a, I'm a black and white type of guy, I'm not... You know, I've got rules, but I use my rules as like railway lines, but I've got bendy railway lines. If they step out the bendy railway lines, they get their watches chopped off. Mm. So that they know that now. So I've been here, what, two and a half, three weeks? Like you said, three games in eight days at the beginning and no games. What hasn't changed is our preparation for the games. So we've, we've, we've had two good weeks of prep for two games, but we didn't play the games. Mm. Now, the players don't know this, but... I would have picked a different team against um, Grimsby as I would have done against Notts County. And now we've got Chesterfield in my head. I'm going out of training this Friday morning. There's another different team. Now people might think, hold on a minute, that's a bit weird. I should be picking the team that I was picking for the mm. first game that was postponed, but they're different opposition. We, we've done our homework. We've seen what they're good at. We can see areas where we think we can hurt them. Um, so I have to pick a team with the players that I've got. The players I've got available to me today or different to the players I had available for the Grimsby Town away game that was called off first so mm. I've got to keep swerving the old bullet if you like and, and picking from what I've got and as we sit I know what I've got we're hopeful that one of the lads who's had Covid tests negative today and again in the morning okay. if he does then he can be involved but at this moment in time I'm definitely going to be without um, PS Bird and uh, anybody else who has been injured previously other than Louis Fernandez. So Louis back. Yeah. Yeah, he was fit for last week. So presumably Arthur's not ready then. Yeah, we've had some uh disappointing news in that in terms of his his report medically is bad, but him physically to the medical team doesn't look as bad. So we're gonna have to investigate that a little bit further. But at this moment in time I I don't like saying this, but I have to rule Arthur out of my mind because he's not going to be involved in the next couple of three games. But Kyle, Kyle, Kyle came back to training and did four days, and I thought, yeah, brilliant that we got him back. Um, but he's, in fairness to him, I've said he's has to, he has to be honest, he has to play with his head and his heart. If he was playing with his heart, he'd play. But he's not stupid, he's, a, he's an intelligent fella, and he knows he's not quite ready himself. So he's told me that face to face which I think is fantastic that's as brave as playing and breaking down in my eyes because I don't want to disappoint somebody by putting Kyle back in the side and then Kyle breaking down and me having to turn to that guy who I've already mm. broke his heart so I'm really appreciative of that that he's, he's acting like a bloke and not like a kid um, which bears good for us in the long term but he's not quite ready yet in the good old days we only used to ask about injuries yeah. sadly the yeah. current clients we have to ask about Covid so uh, I'm guessing it was Brett because he yeah. was the first yeah. have you had any more worries over Covid? Loads every morning <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we test every day whether we're, in, whether we're in training or we're not in training the lads have to test and give their results by 9 o'clock through the medical people it comes to me by 5 past 9 and thankfully everybody who's had it that is Brett that's so Shooter has had it uh, the skips got it. Um, Michael. Yeah, Michael's got it. Um, Birdie has got symptoms of it, and he lives with his mum, who's got it, but he hasn't got it. But he's not well. So the three people that have got it, two of them could be available Saturday, but I'm expecting Birdie not to be. To be okay, honest. So we're talking Brett and Michael. You're worried about. He, but Brett's back. Brett uh, and. Sorry, not Brett Pierce and Michael. Yeah. Pierce is likely not to be involved at the weekend. Brett's back in training as of yesterday. So is AJ, who also had it. So, yeah. So them two have returned to protocol. The two negatives Tuesday, Wednesday, trained Thursday. Michael was negative yesterday. Hopefully he's negative this morning. And he might be available, but he ain't going to train. No. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. But I'm not worried about that. If he if he's fit and well, he plays. Simple as that. Yeah. The, the, the captain's role... Uh, um, 
is an important one. What, what, what have you made of Michael? I, Brilliant. I, I don't think you're the sort of pick out individuals. But I don't. I don't. But you know what? I've only spoke to two people in what I would call a face-to-face -face situation when I've asked them to come and talk to me, and he was one of the first I did. Because listen, Ian's not stupid. He's picked him as a captain because he's got that the material to be a captain, and I, he showed me in the two and a half, three weeks I've been here that he is that because we've had a couple of personal issues with a couple of the players that he's made me aware of before the player involved yeah. let me know which for me is brilliant it's like he's my eyes and he has he's not listen he's not a telltale or a snitch or like that he, he's doing what he should do he's looking after the dressing room but then he, he'll inform me what I need to know I'd, I'd rather not I don't really go in the dressing room other than five to two on a Saturday and what is it ten to seven on a Tuesday. I don't get involved with the dressing room, it's not my business. They can do what they want in there, but he is in charge of that and he's been I'd use the word impeccable so far. Very good. Yeah, yeah. 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 But we're gonna have a problem if you well, I'm gonna have to flip the coin if he isn't available on Saturday to pick a captain. That's interesting. Mm. I'm actually thinking about that. Yeah, who would be? Well we were talking about it last night, me and Hugo, we were saying like if he's not fit who are we gonna pick? And I went I've got, a, I've got, a, I've got an idea, but I haven't made my mind up yet. You, you put quite a bit of store on that because some, Massive. some, some people don't. Well, I, well, I was captain in most of the clubs I played, and I know what I used to take as responsibility, not just as a player, but like I said, whoever's captain on Saturday is going to be captain until Mike's back. Simple as that. Mike's the captain. That's fine. Um, but on that day, that bloke has to be him. So I've got to pick a person who's not going to be just a good footballer on the day, he's got to be a good person on the day, he's got to be slightly different to who he's ever been because he's never been captain for me before, so that, I'll, I may have a little bit of a sleep on that, I don't know yet. And of course it's a nice easy game as well isn't it, they've, they've lost once this season, um, it's on the table, I mean, as we sort of said off camera should we say, they're, they're well funded. Um, and going yeah. great guns and, and one of those big name clubs mm. you know it's yeah I mean I look I look at the fixtures we have and there's more of the big clubs than there are all the small clubs mm. that we're going to face so if we look at who they are rather than what they are we'd be worried going into every game so we can't do that we've got to go there and say we look man against man there's 11 against 11 there's goal in each end there's a ball in the middle let's have a go I, th I guess I've said it before what best performance so far undoubtedly in my mind was Halifax we lost 2-0 mm. if we go and play like we did at Halifax and cut out the the errors defensively then we either come away with a point or we could win that game we had more shots on target than, than Halifax did on the night so listen we're, we're under no illusions it's going to be a, a tough ask nobody outside of that dressing room thinks we're going to win but Everybody inside the dressing room thinks we are going to win, so that's what I want. And, then, and if we turn up to every game with that mindset, like I said, it's all, you just said it, you reach for the stars, you might hit the, the moon, but if you reach for the moon, you're going to hit the gutter. We've got to reach right as far as we can. We want to win every game. We know we're not going to win every game, but we could win the next game, and that's what, that's what we're aiming is. You can't really have a negative attitude, particularly when you, mm. you're trying to get out of that like, I, like I said, you, God forbid that the world of football stops tomorrow because it looks to me like league football and Premier League football has almost stopped, mm. but the National League sort of carrying yeah. on. We've got to get above that line as quickly as we can. It's difficult because we haven't got a lot of games back to back, like Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. What we, and, and we've got the trophy in the middle of working in Altrium. So, what we'd love to have had three games and two wins, we'd have six points, but we've got three points. Uh, three games with two wins so we can only do what the hand were dealt with and like I said to the lads I never asked them to win the next game I just would want to win this game so we'll concentrate on Chesterfield from now till then and once that game's out of the way then we concentrate on the next game and so that, that's working so it, it's yeah. target getting done quickly yeah. get over that line a million percent in every, every game we play I'd like to think that you can ask the players if you want I don't put any more onus on one player or the other player it's the group have to try and win the game and if we win the game brilliant we move on it's another project it's a different team like I said we've had two games uh, cancelled in the last couple of couple of days my team for Grimsby was different to my team for Notts County which is different from a team in Chesterfield and that's a bit weird 
even in my head because yeah. I'm thinking well look, that team was good enough to play them why but we have to do it like that and again some things are taken out of my control with the with the Covid stuff and the injury situation but ultimately I'm getting the shape now with, and I think the fact that I'm going to have to leave two or three fit people back at the ground when the bus leaves on Saturday morning is brilliant for me not for them because right. it's going to be disappointment but how I deal with that and how they deal with that would be tantamount to how well we do as a group of players or whether we change the group of players. We've given you head eventually youngsters yeah. the other day. So, that's, a, yeah. that's for you. Well I've got to say I'm gonna give I don't mention individuals very often, but Tyler Knowles has forced his way into my thinking yeah. to be involved. Yeah. So he doesn't know it yet, but now he does. So <laughs> he, he's gonna be on the bus tomorrow, which is brilliant from my point of view, because yeah. if we get five and get one through, that's good I know recruitment. That's a good that's a good success rate. Yeah. And I didn't know Tyler from Adam when I came to the club, but he's trained with us near enough every day since, and he's the only one I've kept of the five that I want to train with us. And he doesn't, he, what's the word I'm going to wear? He, he doesn't look like he's phased by what I'm asking him to do. He's naturally good at certain things that I like. So listen, don't get me wrong, he's an 18 year old kid. He's not really playing 90 minutes every game, but. I would trust him to go on the pitch and do what I ask him to do, and that's that's a win win for me. Yeah. Chesterfield away though, yeah. for a young what man it, like him, he's big. Well, but he, I guess there's the mental side you, you uh, know as what? well as the football inside. If he side. if he gets used to playing in front of six or seven thousand people at Chesterfield quickly, mm. I would like to think we as a football club and me as a manager will have been that first step on his career, mm. and he get used to that, and hopefully he go on to better things. But if you're playing in front of 200 people, it, with all due respect, Saffron Walden, whatever it is, you know, Sydney Arts, wherever, on loan, which I could do with him, he could play in step four or step three now and play every week, I think. But I'd rather him play bits and parts for me and train with me because I do think he's got what it takes in the very short term I've seen him, having, he's come to me like a blank piece of paper, hasn't he? And all of a sudden he's just gone, whoa. I thought, well, I didn't see that coming. So he's, he's done really well. It's good, so yeah. you, you're finding your own players from within. <laughs> yeah, and then, listen, if we've got... This recruitment yeah, is yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. I, I said it to you before we went on camera. When I, before, I got this, before I took this job, I was a massive believer that the manager needs somebody in recruitment who knows what they're doing, knows what they're talking about, and has a similar mindset to the manager. Me being in this seat, I guarantee you now, it needs to happen all the way through football. Managers shouldn't be the recruiters. Mm. Managers should be the ones who are heading the recruitment, but because they know how they want to play. So I pick the team, so I need a player that looks like that. Mm. Don't bring me that. Mm. So I'm more of a belief now, in three weeks, I know I can't do the recruitment like I used to do because my time as a recruiter is completely different as a manager. I'm spending six, seven hours a day touch tight with the players and therefore when I finish I'm doing all the things I used to do in half a or third of the time you so can't you do it you can't well I can't go and watch the games that I used to go and watch I was out Monday morning Monday afternoon Tuesday night Wednesday night Thursday afternoon Friday morning Friday night I was watching seven eight games a day, and then Saturday seven eight games a week now I'm watching one or two games a week so still quite a lot. <laughs> yeah well uh, some managers don't watch any it's, right. it's hard and I understand that they don't but they probably got people who they know and trust in recruitment so they don't have to go and watch them. They, they Is that cool them. to get a, a, a head of recruitment then? Well we have, there, there are people who work for the club at the moment who I'm finding out about that I need to know their practices and how they do go about their recruitment because ultimately like I said if, you, if I want a cup of coffee don't bring me a packet of biscuits. Mm. But yeah, So I'm, I'm learning as I go with that um, but ultimately it'll take a little bit of time but the window opens tomorrow. I want to know what the plan was before I got here. If there was no plan, then I'd be worried about that. If there is a plan, I want to know what that plan is. Yeah. So again, I think we ask you this every week, and the window does open tomorrow. Yeah. Um, any movement on ins and outs? Because you've, you've obviously... You've well, I don't want to let anybody go yet, I'll be no. honest with you. None of them have done anything that makes me think, ooh, I couldn't use him, or I don't like him, or anything like that. So I haven't got any issues with the group. We do need to add, definitely need to add. Um, I'm going to a game on Sunday, after our game on Saturday, to have a chat with the director of that football club, because I've made an interest known about a player who I'm going to go and watch, and hopefully I can do something 
probably be on Monday. Um, I've got three or four irons in the fire where I've got I've invited people in to I want to have a look at them because they're at higher levels and not playing, so I need to see their fitness and their you know their conditioning and stuff like that. So I don't want it. I said this to the chairman, it's probably why he gave me the job. I'll never spend his pound twice. So I know I can only spend it once, so I, I want to spend it wisely, but I want to get people who are going to improve the team. I don't want to improve my bench, I don't want to improve behind. I've got loads of that, with some really good kids here who are willing and they're able, but they're not, they think they can play 90 minutes at this level every week, but they can't, in my head. So I need people who are going to come into the team. So I'll only, I'll only sign players who I think can start games. Um, so the answer to your question is yes, I've got lots of irons and lots of fires, but I've got to be mindful again of there's not that many people yet in the three games I've been in charge have disappointed me. Mm. So whilst the position in the league will tell you that the group hasn't been good enough, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're probably falsely positioned. Mm. Now that may be me looking through rose tinted glasses. Or it might be me just to have a different outlook on certain players than the previous manager did, I don't know. But the way we played, or the way we've applied ourselves in the three games, suggests to me we're going to get more points in the second half of the season than we did by a long chalk in the first half. So, yes, I want new faces because I want to keep them on the tours and I want competition and what have you. But like I said, I won't be just bringing players in for the sake of bringing players in. And I think that might have been what's happened before. Any areas in particular, or would that be...? Spine. I think nobody can stand up without a spine. I think we need... I use the word minerals a lot. It's blokes, men. We need a couple of men, I think, down the spine of the side. Um, that's not detriment to anybody who's in the spine of the side at the moment. It's just they're young. But average age of the team on Saturday will be take Paul Jones out. Probably about 22. <laughs> Paul Jones. <laughs> yeah, Paul Jones is, Jones is 35. Isn't he? So, other than other than Paul, I think the next one's 27, mm. 26, and then I've got 24, and then everything else is like 19 to 22. Oh, it is young, it, yeah. it, and it's a man's league. So they all think they're blokes, but they don't, they don't even pick up after themselves when they bloody go into the kitchen. So <laughs> they're not blokes. They're just still kids, a lot of them, but they don't realise it. Yeah. I was going to mention South End. They've just had their transfer embargo lifted. Yeah, I see that. So that's one of your rivals, as it were, down the bottom there. And it's just another little advantage to them, I guess. Yeah. That the, 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 again, they're not a small club. Like no, 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 no. By no. any means. So, well, I was, yeah. I was assistant manager there 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Yeah, and that's why I live in South End, because I still live there. I met somebody and married there this year. I've got a real affinity with South End, although it didn't do me that. I don't think they treat, treat me particularly well when I was there, but I do like the club, I, I live in the town. It's a massive club, it's yeah. a massive club. It, it, like Notts County, like Chesterfield, like Halifax, they've got a huge history in football league. So where they are in this league is astonishing, actually. I never forget when I, when I first went to Bristol Rovers, I remember going there, playing against them, they were 10 points above us, Bristol Rovers. They got relegated and we stayed in the division and then they went through League 2, this was in League 1, they went through League 2 and into this division. Mm. So it just shows you, they haven't fixed their trend, they, they're on that one. Now they will bottom out and they will come back, I no doubt about that, but we want to be part of their dip, not part of their rise. So there'll be more people at that game supporting Kings Lynn than people realise, because I know all my family from all over the country, whether they live in South End, Southampton, Newcastle, Everywhere, I think they're coming because it's a Friday night game, so they're yeah. going to spend the weekend with me afterwards. In Widrington Towers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Or in tents in my garden, probably. <laughs> but but yeah, that'll be a, it's a game I'm looking forward to, but I don't look at it. And obviously, I've got to yeah. stick by my party lane. That's like four or five games yeah. away. But, but it's a game that I'm really looking forward to. Last thing, New Year resolution. Can't be? Be better than I was yesterday. Yeah, but everybody who watches this, yeah, everybody who watches this, you know, we're living in a bloody mental world at the moment. I just wish everybody a happy and healthy 2022. And I can assure you, it will be better than 2021 for Kingsland Town Football Club. I genuinely believe it. Okay. That's all we want. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Okay. Indeed, Tommy. That's all right. absolutely I bought the biscuits. I'll bring the coffee. <laughs>